Good morning, everybody. All right, so I'm here to speak on Ethereum, uh, what we've done so far, what we're planning on doing, talk about our ecosystem and community. So um, let's get started. So we're going to go through uh, the Ethereum roadmap, what we know so far, um, the software ecosystem, uh, you know, what tools are out there, what tools are currently being developed. A lot of them you're going to see in deep dive sessions and in uh, product demos and all kinds of stuff throughout the day. And then what makes us different? What does the Ethereum community value and what makes us, you know, sets us apart from other crypto projects, decentralized uh, application projects? All right, so, whoops, let me go this way. Cool, so where we've been. Um, January 2015 is when Vitalik Buterin uh, formally announced Ethereum at the North American Bitcoin Conference. Uh, that was kind of the start of people getting excited publicly about Ethereum. It kind of set things in motion. Um, we, uh, you know, had a crowd sale after that, and then in July 2015, uh, we uh, started the frontier phase. Actually, that should be January 2014. My bad. July 2015, we started the frontier phase, which is when the blockchain actually went live. So when you're thinking, like, as we're, I'm going through these developments, consider that the Ethereum blockchain itself is less than two years old. Uh, March 2016, we had Homestead. It had a lot of protocol improvements, so... Um, just a lot of things that helped kind of speed up transactions, make things more reliable, kind of coming out of an alpha beta phase. Uh, so right now, what do we got going on? We have light clients uh, that are very efficient. Uh, there is a lot of mobile DAP development and embedded DAP development going on. Uh, so for instance, status.im is a mobile Android um, Ethereum app that you can pretty much run any... Ethereum dApp that runs on a website on status. Uh, you can go in and also ha uh, incorporates Whisper, the decentralized peer-to-peer uh, -peer messaging system that Ethereum has. And it has um, just all kinds of really, really neat features. It uses light clients to make it so that as a consumer, you don't have to have the whole blockchain on your phone. You can just uh, use external servers and uh, even, you know, your own light client server on your phone to just get the data that you need. Um, the uh, mobile and embedded devices, there's also Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone integration, uh, all kinds of stuff that stays very well updated. Um, smart contract safety and formal verification, that's kind of some of the hot topics are the smart contract security because you hear about all these blockchain projects that have you know, flaws or that are not properly vetted. So we have an excellent team at the foundation and in the community that is going through and doing groundbreaking uh, cryptographic research on how to secure these smart contracts and how to make it so that, you know, people don't mess up and, and inadvertently uh, create smart contracts that can cause losers to uh, not use the smart contracts correctly pretty much. Because there's a lot of things you can mess up when you're trying to do something from scratch. Solidity is a very new language, so th there's a lot of uh, development that's going to be happening, over, uh, that's already happened, and it's gonna be happening that will make it a whole lot more secure. And then interest from many industries. Uh, Ethereum has had a lot of interest in the enterprise sector. Um, we have a lot of banks, energy, uh, industry, you know, tracking all kinds of stuff and use cases that have been explored and that uh, people are just kind of getting into small groups and figuring out on their own. There's starting to be more of a, uh, more of a, like, people getting together and trying to make consortiums their self. And Joe Lubin is going to be talking uh, later about enterprise Ethereum groups and just kind of where that landscape is and where Ethereum's been. Uh, so he'll give a more detailed talk on that. So, where are we going? We're going to Metropolis. So that is the next uh, phase of Ethereum development. So uh, basically, like we just went through, Frontier was the launch, Homestead was a lot of the upgrades and uh, things that made the network more stable, and then Metropolis goes through and provides a lot more flexibility for smart contract developers. They put things where smart contracts uh, can, you know, pay their own fees, so when you send a transaction, 
you don't have to um, uh, externally, you know, fund it every time a, something is ran. The smart contract itself can uh, fund the transactions going forward. Um, initial steps toward Ethereum abstraction. To me, this is one of the coolest things because what that means is that we're going to take Ethereum, and right now you have to, you know, download an Ethereum client and um, basically use that client, and it has the blockchain, the logic layer, the storage layer, the consensus layer all packaged in. And if you want to change any of that, you have to go in and uh, you know, do soft forks or hard forks. And if you're an enterprise, you have to go in and just mutilate the code and get your own consensus mechanism in there. But what abstraction is going to do, uh, what we're calling abs abstraction, is uh, the ability to swap out consensus protocols within Ethereum, the ability to have uh, you know, different types of account security. So right now, we have to use the account uh, security mechanisms uh, that Bitcoin and that uh, Ethereum use when you know, you're creating a public-private key. But later, you can use Lamport signatures, or you can use RSA, or you know, infinite possibilities within what your use case is, either in a, like a private setting, a consortium blockchain. And combining that with all of the things uh, that people are doing trying to interconnect blockchains makes it super, super powerful. Um, I feel like that's going to definitely be the future. And then, of course, uh, kind of setting the groundwork for scalability solutions, including uh, sharding, which I'm going to talk more about in a second. Ooh, ZK snarks. That's definitely a hot word right now, hot, hot phrase. So uh, ZK snarks are zero-knowledge proofs. So it is a way to have anonymous uh, transactions of value. Right now, uh, Zcash is the... Uh, basically the first ones who have a widely known public chain um, ZK Snark system. They launched in December, and uh, their team has been super friendly to us. We have a really good relationship with them, so we're starting to do work to enable ZK Snarks on Ethereum. Um, and the interesting thing is that there is this collaboration, even though we are different projects, because we're really doing this for the good of you know, having this, you know, decentralized technology and pushing the agenda forward. It's not about profit or not about the kind of stuff that some, you know, blockchain and cryptocurrency projects go for. We really just want to make really cool stuff and help, you know, society by making these things that support uh, censorship resistance and decentralization. So uh, on the technical side of that, basically, uh, we don't have support for a certain type of um, elliptic curve cryptography method in Ethereum. So we're adding that in uh, during Metropolis and uh, just kind of working out the details of that right now and how that's going to work. Uh, we have everything else to support it already. Um, and then in the future, you know, with uh, abstraction coming full force, that's going to be even more possibilities around snarks. All right. Super cool stuff after Metropolis is Serenity. Um, we know Metropolis is going to be in the next three to six months. We don't know when Serenity is going to be, but um, this is going to be when you know, the really big stuff hits. We're changing from uh, proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, right now, we're leaning on you know, the Casper consensus algorithm, which Vlad Zemfir is going to talk about uh, in a deep dive session later today. So uh, what that's going to do, uh, for those who are not familiar with proof of stake, uh, proof of work you know, is just like the Bitcoin network does it. You have miners that um, you know, are using their computing power and burning electricity in order to secure the coins. So uh, what proof of stake is going to do is you have um, coins that you kind of lock into these contracts on the network, and you have virtual miners. So you abide by a set of rules to lock your coins in, and that makes you a virtual miner that um, on-chain has the ability to approve of transactions and act as a miner securing the network without having to expend uh, costly external resources and hurt the environment with a lot of this uh, heat production and energy cost that comes with proof of work in most cases. Um, finish abstraction on Ethereum. So uh, I talked about it a little bit in the last slide, but um, additionally, what we're trying to do is um, have just a lot more flexibility with what people want to do. There's you know, sometimes big debates about UTXO um, transaction models versus you know, what uh, Ethereum uses. And so having this abstraction from the uh, 
logic layer and the storage layer, you can put UTXO-based token management on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, you can have advanced contract execution schemes, so uh, the ability to have um, contracts, like I said, pay for their own transactions, which is a huge step in having smart contracts be more autonomous and not have to um, be activated by outside influence necessarily. And then blockchain sharding. Um, what sharding does, right now when you have blockchains, there's a single blockchain and in that blockchain you have whatever consensus algorithm and everyone's uh, downloaded the entire chain so everyone has the same copy and so everyone can verify and everyone gets updated in relatively the same amount of time. What sharding does is it cuts the blockchain into hundreds or thousands of pieces so that each node that is running only has to <coughs> approve of their piece, that their shard of the network. And that sounds insecure because it's like, well, how do they know about all the other pieces? But what we're working on is a solution to take Merkle roots, uh, so the thing that kind of structures a lot of the transaction receipts um, and you know, transaction uh, stuff in both Bitcoin and Ethereum, and we're going to make it so that every shard has a Merkle proof that can then compare across each other and make it so that it has a, um, a strong sense of consensus. Shards can talk across from each other, uh, cross-communicate, and there's still a lot of research to be done in this. It's definitely not something that's in stone right now, which is why there's not really an estimated time uh, for Serenity to come out. But the research is really promising. It, there's a, you know, some channels on Gitter that we, uh, a lot of people participate in, and it's really groundbreaking stuff from both academia and uh, just you know, normal people who have really good ideas or who are uh, you know, hobbyist cryptographers who come in and help us with a lot of this, uh, including the economic theory. There's also um, some things that we're going to do to decrease block time. Uh, theoretically, with blockchain sharding, you can uh, bring the block time down significantly. Uh, you can also have tens of thousands throughput of transactions eventually. When Serenity first comes out, it's probably not going to be that uh, way exactly. There's definitely going to be higher throughput of transactions, but the goal is to uh, set up a structure through abstraction to be able to iterate on each part of the Ethereum protocol uh, in a way that's more simple, that's not all interconnected, and that allows for these type of innovations that I've described. So, Ethereum uh, software ecosystem, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is just how much, it's actually overwhelming sometimes, how much has been done in the Ethereum ecosystem. So what I got right here, little bubbles that describe uh, what's going on in the Ethereum ecosystem from kind of a high level. So uh, let's start with clients. Uh, Ethereum uh, does not have, we basically implement a, uh, a protocol standard and then the clients follow that standard rather than having a like core reference uh, client that everyone follows and that is the standard. So what that means is you can take our uh, you know, protocol specification and implement it into a lot of different programming languages without having to rely on the core code base of any others. So we have, as you can see, C++, Java, Ruby, and I actually didn't even list them all. I think there's a few more Haskell included uh, clients that you can you know, take the code base for and just right off the bat connect to the Ethereum network. Uh, there's also um, dev tools. So uh, I know MetaMask is here, uh, and they're going to be uh, talking during a learning session. Uh, there's Solidity, which is our um, uh, smart contract language. There's Embark and Truffle, which are uh, ab tools to create uh, Solidity abstractions and to help uh, people create and test their smart contracts. And then uh, all the IDE icons uh, are going, and like text uh, processor icons are programs that have Ethereum plugins for uh, linting and all these other things. So really there's just a variety. If you want to jump into Ethereum development, there's a lot of tools right there, and it's real easy to get into. Um, the enterprise on the far left is going to be um, what the future of Ethereum is going to look like outside of the public scope. So we have block apps, Monax, uh, Tendermint, 
J.P. Morgan's Quorum, uh, you know, Heiko's uh, project with Hydrochain on the uh, far left, the mushroom-looking one. That's a really cool logo. So uh, they're, what they're working on is having alternative uh, consensus mechanisms, so sometimes proof of stake, sometimes different round-robin protocols, because a lot of the time when you're working with uh, different businesses, you don't necessarily need, like, you need to have some sense of decentralization, but you kind of trust who you're working with there. If you have like 10 or 100 companies and you know them all and you know what their addresses are and it's not anonymous or pseudo-anonymous, you don't really need that. You, you can kind of uh, assist in that trade-off of trust and uh, scalability. So what they're trying to do is get uh, bigger uh, transaction throughput. They're trying to uh, iterate on talking between different blockchains and a ton of other cool things. There's um, a few different enterprise deep dives throughout this conference. Uh, we got dApps, Uport is here, uh, Gnosis is here, uh, Oracleize is here, and then there's been some other kind of um, popular dApps that have popped up recently, including First Blood, Akasha, Project Oaken. Uh, and then finally, and probably most importantly, we have a very, very strong community. We have a very active uh, Reddit. Uh, we have dozens of GitHub ch or Gitter channels that are all hours of the day, people coming in. And like, I, I really got interested in Ethereum because it's super approachable. Like, you can be on Reddit and just, you know, in a thread be like, oh, hey, core developer of Ethereum or dApp developer, what's this new uh, thing that's going on? How do I fix this? Uh, we have a stack exchange that has hundreds of questions answered in there. And uh, we have meetups from all around the world, some of them topping 1,000 members uh, in bigger cities like Berlin and London. So uh, generally, you'll be able to find a meetup in your city, especially if you live in a bigger city or a metropolitan area. So it's just a thriving community. And we've been able to keep it that way, a very focused, uh, you know, non-violent, uh, non I guess, non-yelly, non, you know, all that stuff, toxic, I guess would be the word. Uh, community, so it's really enjoyable to go to those meetups and talk to people, even though they're sometimes really awkward nerds who don't get out much and they're, you know, haven't seen the sunlight in a few weeks. Hey, yeah. All right, so what makes Ethereum different? To me, what makes Ethereum different and a lot more attractive as a product, for one thing, you know, we get, we, we have a track record, a, you know, a GitHub history of going through planning and executing. Even if we're doing it faster than a lot of people you know, think we should, even if they're calling it unsafe, we you know, go fast and we get things done. We have a blockchain that works. It's getting battle tested. We've had multiple attacks and other uh, types of problems or issues on the blockchain that we've quickly overcome uh, through cohesiveness across multiple developer groups and multiple client groups that, you know, generally wouldn't necessarily be friends. We kind of all came out of the same mold. And if you look on the left side, there is um, all the uh, groups of DevCon. So at the very top left, there's DevCon 0. Uh, middle is DevCon 1. Bottom is DevCon 2. So you can see every DevCon, we're growing a number of developers and attendees. It's more than doubled every year. DevCon is our developer-focused conference. Uh, Super cool event. Like, it's it's not one of those kind of events where you go and it's all these businesses pitching stuff. It's like super super technical protocol level. Bunch of really shy guys getting on stage and talking about what they've been doing for six months with no one around. So um, bottom right, that's to me representative of the cross uh, application and cross blockchain uh, protocol support that we're trying to get into, including Snarks. Uh, we're good friends with the Zcash team, we're good friends with IPFS, uh, we're good friends, yeah, like, we really have a really inclusive community. Like, we are, you know, really happy to work with anyone who wants to further the uh, decentralized nature of technologies and really push this movement forward. And then, uh, yeah, top right is one of the meetups, one of the more popular ones. Uh, and in the middle, we have Doge Ethereum. So that kind of shows that like, if you go into the subreddit or if you see a lot of, like, what some of our, you know, a lot of the more prominent members of our community, uh, Jeff, who's the Go lead developer, 
Vitalik, some of the more famous trolls of Ethereum on Twitter, they're making jokes all the time. It's a laid, it's a laid back environment. You have to get through with humor. You, it, everything can't be super serious all the time. So uh, yeah, we, a lot of people in the Ethereum community really like Doge. And that, to me, that kind of shows a sense of laid backness, a sense of you know, being able to take humor in things. And you can make jokes about state channels and make jokes about silly things going on in cryptocurrency battles and stuff. So lastly, there's a scavenger hunt. It's starting tomorrow. It's cross-blockchain. It involves Ethereum, Bitcoin, Zcash, and IPFS. Uh, we're going to be posting more about how to get involved in that. Uh, it's going to be mostly digital, but there are some physical aspects. Don't worry. You're not going to have to run. You're not going to have to go that far off-site. We can all still be lazy. Uh, it's almost entirely digital, and, and it involves a lot of Ethereum smart contracts and other components. There's a really cool Zcash uh, method that um, Jay and Zuko and others are working on and helping with. It's going to be really, really awesome. So yeah, that is uh, my presentation. If, uh, questions, can that happen? Sweet. Anyone have questions? I'll change your mind, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, we, uh, is there a microphone or? Oh yeah, so the question was, am I gonna be posting the slides? Yep, I'll post on my Twitter and my website. I usually try to do that. So yeah, the slides will be, I'm at, uh, at Hudson Jameson and HudsonJameson.com. And uh, yeah, what other questions? Um, hi there, yeah, so uh, I saw on one of your slides, uh, you're looking at advanced contract execution schemes. I was just wondering if you could mention uh, a bit more about that, whether they'll sure. happen on chain, off chain. What's it's gonna be a combination. So there's obviously things that everyone's heard about like state channels, and that's gonna play a big part. There's a lot of uh, cool projects that are outside of uh, Ethereum's core development, including uh, Raiden and Gollum, which are kind of, um, Raiden is pretty much like Lightning Network style uh, implementation on top of Ethereum. Uh, Gollum is a distributed uh, computation market. So uh, both of those, you know, powered by Ethereum at their core. And then within the actual core protocol, there was some stuff that you can't really do uh, very well. So for instance, a contract can't uh, hold its own ether and, or no, a contract can't hold its own ether. It can't like execute and send that ether after the fact. So you have to, you have to poke it. You have to say, hey, do this function and you have to supply the transaction fees as the user who is either using the contract or who wants someone else to use the contract. So now with smart contracts paying their own fees, it makes it a little bit easier for the user to not have to guess uh, when they're going in and trying to uh, initiate a smart contract. And additionally, uh, it helps with you know keeping that nebulous part of what the transaction fee is going to be today. Put that on the smart contract developer and not the user who doesn't want to do that. We want Ethereum to be behind the scenes. You shouldn't know you're using Ethereum if this, if this is in the real world. It'll be a, a back-end system that's going to you know, connect everything. We, this, we don't want it to interfere with the users. We're going to make it as user-friendly as we can. Uh, next question. Uh, you, the question was, what kind of events uh, trigger contract execution, and what was it again? And the next version. So, uh, Metropolis, it's not, there's not going to be too many changes with that yet. It's more Serenity. So, uh, in Serenity, there, there might be a few in Metropolis. It's still a little bit up in the air because uh, we're still finalizing our Ethereum improvement protocols around what we're going to complete. But uh, some of what's going to happen there is the ability for uh, smart contracts to be their own. So, right now we have user accounts and we have smart contracts. And user accounts are people contracts, like they can't actually have their own code on there, but we're gonna combine it so that everything is just a contract, even like user accounts or contracts. So in doing that, you have better 
uh, execution to uh, send a transaction and the contract take it and say, oh, I already have Ether in my contract account, so I can just provide the transaction fee and send it along. Whereas before, as a user, I had to be like, is this going to be enough you know, Ether or uh, gas I'm sending to execute the transaction? I'm not sure. Uh, right now, if you send, if you, you know, talk to a contract and you don't put enough uh, gas in, which is our, uh, basically our word for what runs the system, it's an abstraction of transaction costs. If you don't put enough gas in, it could just fail, and it'll just do an out-of-gas error and return to you. That's going to help prevent those a lot more. Oh, microphone, right there. That's Serenity, but it's um, going to be optional, of course. Uh, it's not, we're not changing how we're doing our normal Ethereum management. I'm more uh, talking about the ability to take Ethereum's core code base and implement those kind of things easier. There's going to be more um, cryptographic things, uh, cryptographic precompiles behind the scenes that would enable types of transactions like that. Yep. So uh, I think that's all my time. Thank you all so much for listening to me. And check out a lot of the Ethereum workshops we have going on. We have deep dives. A lot of cool people here uh, interacting. Thank you.